Afterburn is the Bolger, Mabillard, Inverted Coaster at Carowinds. The layout has a lot of similarities to Montu, and any time you can be compared to America's best invert, that is a great sign. This coaster may be overshadowed by two other B&Ms at Carowinds, but Afterburn is still a really good ride on its own. Find out why in this review. Carowinds currently has one of the strongest coaster lineups out there, but that's primarily because of the investments the Cedar Fair has made over the past decade. Back in the late 1990s when Paramount owned the park, Carowinds had a much weaker coaster lineup. The park was filled with notoriously rough wooden steel coasters. That all changed in 1999. After seeing the success of the B&M inverts across the country, Carowinds added Top Gun the Jet Coaster for $10.5 million. While this was a seamless theme for an invert, the ride was almost themed to Godzilla. However, those plans were scrapped after 1998's Godzilla remake movie bombed. So Carowinds quickly used the Top Gun IP that had been well received at their other parks. Top Gun was placed in the back corner of the park on a wooded hill. This is a great location. Not only do the inversions whiz past trees, but the ride interacts with pathways and the parks rarely use South Gate. It creates a lot of energy in this back section of the park around the midway. I also love how this coaster looks. The silver track and blue supports look beautiful. And the ride has some airplane theming. The station is designed to look like an airplane hangar, and there's a model plane towering above the midway that makes for a nice photo opportunity. After Cedar Fair purchased all the Paramount Parks in 2006, all four Top Gun coasters were renamed. They kept all the airplane theming, but three of them got generic names in Flight Deck. Thankfully, Carowinds gave their invert a unique and awesome name in Afterburn. Afterburn is a short wait most days. That's because of its secluded location and high capacity. Afterburn runs two trains, each seating up to 32 riders across eight rows. And dispatches are pretty quick too because the restraints are easy to check. Like most B&M inverts, Afterburn is over the shoulder restraints. The padding isn't the softest, but the ride experience is very comfortable because the track work is so smooth. The front typically has a longer line as with most inverts, but I prefer this coaster in the back anyway where the inversions have more whip and power. Once dispatched, you ascend the 113 foot or 34 meter tall lift hill. At the top, you get a full view of the massive parking lot, and then you twist 90 degrees down a curving drop. If you're in the back, you're forcefully pulled down this plunge. You then cruise through the first of six inversions, an excellent vertical loop. This one combines strong positive G's with strong whip over the top. You then dive into a trench, feeling every bit of this coaster's 62 mile per hour or 100 km per hour top speed. You then climb towards the sky and navigate an Immelman, much like a fighter pilot. The positive G's climbing into the element are solid, and the back gets some whip over the top. This is a fun inversion, but it's the weakest of the ride. Next is a zero G roll. Considering how snappy the other inversions are in Afterburn, and the time when this coaster was built, it's honestly surprising the zero G roll isn't more aggressive. The older B&M inverts rotated through their zero G rolls faster, and usually offered laterals. Afterburns is nice and floaty like the newer B&M inverts. I honestly don't mind because it juxtaposes the rest of the ride's force as well. Next is the Batwing, and I really wish more inverts include this element. The back gets insane whip on the first inversion, while the front gets their abrupt snap on the second inversion. Then everyone is subjected to leg numbing positive G's as you dive into the trench between inversions. I think Montu's Batwing is a little more aggressive, but Afterburns is great too. Then the train navigates a camelback over the lift hill. While this element is devoid of airtime, you get this awesome leg chopper with the ride's lift motor. You then zip through the ride's final inversion, which is an incredibly quick corkscrew. It's hidden just enough by the trees on ride that you can't quite see it coming. The transition into the element is the one spot on the coaster that can cause some headbanging, but I ultimately love how wild this corkscrew is, just lean forward to avoid smacking your head. Afterburn then spirals upwards into the brake run, delivering some nice positive G's along the way. You then hit the brakes, ending the 2,956 foot or 901 meter long coaster. It's not one of the longest inverts in terms of track length, but it gives a fast paced and satisfying ride with plenty of action. 
So what would I rate Afterburn? I would give this invert a 9 out of 10. This is the best invert in the Cedar Fair chain, and one of the best in America. This is among the best sequenced inverts. The only somewhat weak element on this ride in my opinion is the Camelback, but everything else is good to great. Afterburn is a no-nonsense coaster subjecting riders to six inversions in rapid fire succession. And along with all that power, Afterburn manages to deliver a smooth ride experience. It really is everything I could want in an invert. So those are my thoughts on Afterburn at Carowinds. What are your thoughts on this B&M invert? Do you agree it's one of the stronger ones out there? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.